All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo. Uh, it's a two-man crew once again. Like I said last week, and Casey mentioned the week before, it is a two-man crew going forward until at least the end of the season or, or until Casey decides he wants to come back. Uh, so Manny, me, we are two-man crew once again. And uh, I think this is the second time that as a two-man crew, we have had to discuss a loss. So yeah. Not the best. Um, I, I guess I, I'm actually surprised that Casey didn't want to come on at least for a little bit this week to kind of gloat about the fact that he was the only person in Bill's Mafia who picked the Jaguars to win. Um, and he did it before the season started, so I'll give him some some credit there. Uh, he didn't do it last week. But before the season started, and this is all recorded, it's been tweeted out multiple times, he said the Jaguars were going to beat the Bills. So if you want to get mad at anyone, I just, we'll just just get mad at Casey. You could tweet at him, say whatever. Maybe not say whatever, but you could tweet at him. Let him know, like, hey, congrats on your win last week. I, I'm so happy for you that you were right that you picked the Jaguars. Good job, Casey. Yeah. You know, we we could we could just do that. Was you good with that, Manny? Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, <laughs> I blame him for any time the Bills lose. I blame Casey. <laughs> yeah, and definitely no no animosity here whatsoever. Yeah, like yeah. not not upset that he picked them or anything like that. And then midway through the game, not upset that he was able to text me and be like, "Hey, so I might be right." Yeah, <laughs> he just it was it was uh, tough. In the the chat that he was with the the chat with us three. He just put the eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like really, Casey. Really, you have to yeah. Do that? Yeah. And then, I mean, eventually he was like, just to be clear, like, you guys know I'm not actually happy. I'm like, no, no, no yeah. Casey, I get it. You're not, like, actually happy. But there's got to be a part of you yeah. who's yeah. sitting there feeling a little vindicated that you're like, yeah, no, I got made fun of for however many, nine weeks at this point, because he said it right before the season started. Yeah. And here we are. He was right. So uh, just congratulations, Casey. So all of yeah. that to say the Bills lost six to nine to the Jaguars. So let's just everyone get it out of the way now. Just a nice collective nice um, <laughs> because there, th that's the only thing, the score, that's it. The only yeah. thing that you could say nice to from that game because that game was ugly. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let, do you want do you want to start off with the things you didn't like or things you did like, Manny? Because it I, was just disgusting to watch in general. I had a bad feeling as soon as the game started – or just before kickoff, they they put out a stat on CBS saying that the last, I can't remember, I think it was four or five games between the Jaguars and the Bills have been less than seven point difference. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is not yeah. good. That's not a good sign. And uh, lo and behold, it was just, uh, you know, it was embarrassing. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I was pissed like everybody else, but. It, it felt a lot like watching the playoff game in Jacksonville, yeah. honestly, where it was like nothing seemed to be going right. But the entire time, it's not like the game was out of hand, so the Bills could technically have a chance. But they really didn't because they didn't do enough. And it was, yeah, it was a it was a very disappointing game to watch. Um, me and you, we got to we got to figure we got to sort our things out first here, though. Yeah. I guess before we do the winners and losers of the week, because yeah. and we talked about this together. Um, I, every time I have picked the bills to win by a massive amount and everybody picked the bills to win by a lot last week, but yeah. I picked the bills to win by a massive amount week one week, whatever, six, I think against the Titans. Yeah. And then this past week, week nine. Yeah. And every time I've done that, the bills have proceeded to lose. So I am implementing a rule for myself now, and we'll get to yours here in a second. I'm implementing a rule for myself. My predictions, I will not predict the Bills to win by more than two touchdowns the rest of the year. I might be thinking it in my mind. I can't help that. <laughs> yeah. I, I cannot help that. But I will not put out a prediction that has the Bills winning by more than two touchdowns because that has just come back to bite me every single time. So if you want to place blame on me for that, I get it. When I was on the Air Raid Hour when I was filling in for Steve, uh, um, I placed 1% blame on myself for that portion of it. And then I placed 1% blame on Manny as well. So Manny, you can, you can talk about your part of the blame. Yeah. Uh, every time I've, I've been on Napno's Buffalo since week five. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I picked the Bills twice in my five best bets in the yep. Titans game <laughs> and last week Jacksonville, and they both lost. So I'm putting in a rule that I will never pick the Bills in my best bets, five best bets for the rest of the season because I don't want to feel that crappy again. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was it was heartbreaking. And look, like we, I think we both understand, like we actually don't factor yeah. into this whatsoever. Yeah. But at but, the same time, I believe um, it was the great Michael Scott said, I'm not superstitious, but I'm a little stitious. Yeah. Uh, that is how I feel. I know I don't actually factor in, but when the stuff keeps happening like that, I'm like, but do I? I like, maybe yeah, so I look, do make a difference. I, I, I don't, I'm not like you, I'm not superstitious. But there was a moment where I think it was maybe the second, uh, maybe the third quarter where I was like, yo, I'm not wearing my Allen jersey. Should I change and put on my Allen jersey? Maybe that's the difference. So I went and put my Allen jersey and then all of a sudden next play, Allen throws a pick. I'm like, damn, it's not the Allen jersey. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't the jersey. Look, wasn't nobody, the jersey. nobody really wants to admit that they're superstitious until yeah. things are going wrong and they're like, man, I got to change something that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Even if they're not doing anything that would have if- any sort of effect. If they're not going to make adjustments, I'm going to make adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Look, last last week you praised the coaching staff for making yeah. adjustments. Oh. And this week you were like, no, look, uh, if you guys aren't going to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, same with the Manning cast, right? Everybody's talking about the Manning yeah. cast curse. I didn't, I didn't believe in it. I didn't. And uh, now you're just like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know, the other thing I didn't believe in is the white jerseys, the white yeah. with the blue. Yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to believe in that too. I love that uniform combination. I think yeah. it's one of the better looking uniform combinations the Bills have, where it's white jersey, blue pants. I've always liked that, but I'm starting to think maybe that's a combo that shouldn't be worn. I don't know. I don't know. That's yeah. we'll just have to keep watching that. Um, yeah. So let's let's get into it. Winners or no? One thing that you liked. Let's start there because. We, we got to start off on a, a – sure. we didn't really start off on a good foot already, but we got to try to. Yeah, one thing – I'll say one thing I liked was Matt Hack. <laughs> I think he actually <laughs> played a great game for what he needed to do. Uh, I've been kind of concerned about the punting, uh, and this mm-hmm. was a great game to actually see how the punting was. And uh, Hack did great. Like, I don't know. Every time we're – the games that we've lost, he's been great. It's the games that we win that he's kind of like, you know. So I don't know. Maybe he just needs more punting and he gets better (laughs) at it. I don't know. There's not. I I really hope that's not the case. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly, Kyle, there, there's not much to be happy about. No, there, there's not. But I, I, so I, I do think that when we're looking back at the game, everyone's so focused on the offense. That yes. there's the when you talk about the yeah. offense, there's definitely nothing. There's just about nothing to be happy about outside yeah. of. Yeah. Um, I will say I had three things listed just to make sure that I I am prepared uh, to. And you you are also much better about being yeah. prepared than yeah a former co-host, um, current <laughs> on leave co-host. We don't have to name him, yeah. you know, not to out anyone, but uh, somebody wasn't always the most prepared. Yeah. Um, but I had three things listed. And it was Stefan Diggs finally getting involved a little bit. It, it felt like it was too little too late. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I don't love that it, it felt like it had to be forced. But they finally got Stefan Diggs involved in the offense a little bit. And he was very clearly the most effective player on the field when they got him the ball. It just didn't happen very often. I don't know what's going on with that. They need to get Stefan Diggs the ball more. Because when Josh Allen actually threw to him, when he gave him a chance to make a play outside of that last, I believe the fourth down play when he tried to force it to him, it turned out pretty well. So I liked seeing that on offense, but that was just about the only thing. I do want to say, let's not act like that game was all bad in terms of the entire team, though, because the offense didn't show up. The defense, they, the defense came to play. Yeah. I know the Jaguars were able to move the ball a little bit, and we didn't get every single stop immediately when we wanted, but we only gave up nine points. The Bills only gave up nine points as a team, three field goals, and and they were able to somehow 
get the kicker to, and I don't think that, I don't know if this is really the defense affecting it that much, but they got him to miss three in a row. So good job on the special teams there. But the defense has been really good all year. There's only really been one game where another team has been able to move the ball consistently against them, and it was the Titans. So even when the Bills give up one or two first downs on a drive, they seem to always still find a way to get that stop that's necessary. So that, and then obviously Tyler Bass just continues to be consistent. No complaints there. Keep doing your thing, Tyler Bass. I know you listen to us every single week, so props to you. Big leg Bass, big baller Bass, whatever people want to call him. I don't even care. Just keep making kicks. I love seeing it. So that's my thing that I liked. Let's get into the dislikes. Yeah. Because this this could take a while. Yeah. The dislikes, you know, I, I got to start with Josh Allen. I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm a big believer in Josh Allen. I still am. I don't think one game defines him. Uh, but that was a bad game. He tried to play hero ball. He was getting yeah. frustrated. He wasn't getting the opportunities that he usually does. And he was getting frustrated. And because of that frustration, he was trying to be hero. And I, I thought that was out of his system. And and it looked like when he gets frustrated, hero ball seems to come back into Josh Allen's mindset. And uh, he, he, he's got to learn that he doesn't need to get frustrated and just take what is given to you. And I found that I found that Allen and the offense tried to force things and it just didn't work. And yeah, you just got to and- keep it simple. Right. And we'll, we'll obviously like for anybody who's like, but the offensive line, like, well, trust me, we'll get to them. We, yeah. we understand that yeah. Allen's performance was partially, you know, hindered by the offensive line. It was made worse by the offensive line in their play. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second, but sticking on Allen, like, yeah, that was, that was rookie Josh Allen, like yeah. bad, not even good rookie Josh. Allen. That was bad rookie Josh Allen. It just, there wasn't much to like about what he did despite anything else. It felt like there was multiple plays where, and yes, he made a couple of crazy throws that the receivers dropped. He made some plays that were really good that the receivers dropped. Didn't like that either. So uh, just to kind of throw that in there in the middle, Emmanuel Sanders had two big drops. Uh, Cole Beasley had a really big drop. And then obviously Gabe Davis had a massive drop uh, that probably could have gotten the Bills into uh, a better position to either get a field goal or a touchdown on that last drive. So that was obviously bad. The wide receivers were not great for that. But Josh Allen also just missed throws. There was times where Emmanuel Sanders was open on that fourth down play. He could have gone to Sanders. There was times where it felt like he was trying to force the ball to, you know, Cole Beasley too much on the on the screens. I know those are called, but you can check out of those sometimes. It felt like he just never really saw the open receiver. And I don't have the all twenty two. I don't. I will never claim to be a film watcher. So. I don't know if there was always guys who were open on every play, but it felt like he was also kind of unsure of all of his throws. It didn't matter where he was going to. And when you pair that with the offensive line's performance, then you're going to get a guy who just kind of looks like he's running around trying to play hero ball because he feels like he has to. And then if you, if he's unsure, you get the two interceptions, you get his fumbles. Luckily one of them didn't get called, but it didn't end up mattering. Like it was, it was just an, an ugly yeah. game from Josh all around the kind of game that you watch the game tape once pick what you can from it and then just throw it out. Like just don't yeah. even ever think of it again. Cause that was not Josh Allen. Look, that was not the Josh Allen that we've gotten to used to watching. All good quarterbacks have bad games. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I remember uh, not just long ago when we went to green Bay, Buffalo did and, and just shut down Aaron Rodgers. And I think Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers had statistically his worst game ever against the Buffalo Bills that year. And you're not going to be like, well, Aaron Rodgers sucks now. Right. He's still a good quarterback, right? It's one game. It happens. You move on. You pick out what you've done wrong, fix on it, and you move on to the next game. Yeah, it sucks. You lost to Jags. Yes. The mm-hmm. London Jaguars. You lost to the London Jaguars. And <laughs> And 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 that happens. We're not yeah. going to be the only team who lose to the London Jaguars. No, look, it's it, there's. I mean, we're not we're not the only team because we're their second win. It's just yeah. unfortunate that like we're actually supposed to be a good team. The Bills yeah. are supposed to be a good team, and they just they, they just didn't show up. Yeah. Um, the other things that I have, 
I didn't like the refs um, and just the way they called the game. I think yeah. this spans for the entire season. I don't want to spend too much time on this because yeah. it's. I think it's just very clear. I don't think that the refs are the reason the Bills lost the game. I want to get that out there, make that very clear. This was not a situation where the Bills lost because of the refs, but the refs were still very, very, very bad. Yeah. It just the bills were worse, in my opinion. Yeah, um, they were. They were bad. Uh, they've been bad all season. It is what it yeah. is, right? Yeah, it's something really you got to get used to at this point. Yeah, expect and, it. And you're right. The bills didn't lose because of the refs. They lost because they sucked on yeah. offense. <laughs> yeah. Um. I I also have injuries. Teron Johnson, Ed Oliver, and then I yeah. think there was another injury that I, I can't quite remember right now. Um, uh, but obviously, losing Teron Johnson not great for the Bills defense. He's been superb this year. Yeah. And then if Ed Oliver, I, I haven't, I've kind of stayed away from any sort of new information since the game just to kind of clear my mind. I don't even know if he's practicing right now. If I'm going to be completely honest. I think honest. Uh, the, the only guy I heard today was uh, Tremaine Edmonds hasn't been practicing. Okay. So that's a, a right. little bit of a concern that AJ Klein might be playing with. Milano. Don't don't love that, yeah. But we'll we'll, we'll manage. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, losing Teron Johnson was the bigger one yeah. out of all yeah. of those um, because his was something that just literally took him out of the game and it took him out of the game early. Yeah. Um, concussion. You hope he ends up being good to go. I think he's at least going to miss this week, probably more. We'll see. I don't know, but hopefully he ends up healing up okay. Never want to see injuries, especially to a player who's playing as well as he is. Uh, running game, it's been bad all year. I didn't realize it was this bad to the point where the the running backs are averaging 0. 0.22 yards before contact for the entire season. I mean, it was it was abysmal against the Jaguars, and everything kind of was. But that's an entire season stat. That's not just a one game thing. That's a full. That's a that's a half season trend at this point. That's a problem. So when we're looking at oh, the running game is not good. Let's just bring in a new running back. People were throwing that out earlier on in the season. It, it's only going to help so much. If there's not a hole available for the running back to run through, they're just not going to be able to go anywhere. It doesn't matter how fast you are. If there's not an available space to run, you can't get anywhere. So that's that's a problem. I, I have one thing I want to save for the end, but let's do the offensive line. Cody Ford, we'll start out with him. What? <laughs> What are your thoughts on Cody Ford? Let's. I want to give you the floor first on that. Look, Cody Ford is a backup. That's what he is. He's a backup lineman. I'm not going to say he's horrible because you know what? You got to be good to be in the NFL. So he has some skill, but he's not a starter. And I think where the problem comes in is when you have to start Cody Ford, you're in trouble. He's not. He he can come in for you know, a breather here and there and help out your lineman, but he's not starter material. And, and yeah, he's, that's my opinion. Uh, I I think he's still capable of being a backup, but he's not a starter. I, I think anybody, I don't know. Maybe people who listen to this don't remember, but um, I was a Cody Ford supporter in the off season. I thought this was going to be the year because he had his time. It's been a couple of years. He's been in the league. I thought, I didn't think he was going to be like a superstar by any means, but I thought he'd put it together to the point where you were comfortable with him being on the line. Not like, Oh, we have to give this dude another contract. Nowhere near that. More just like, okay, we're, we're set. We're okay yeah. for the next like year or two years, the duration of his contract. We're okay. We don't have to worry about going and finding a replacement. I thought we were going to be able to get to that point this year, and boy, was I wrong. Like I, was, I could not have been more wrong because he's not even worth playing. He might not even be worth holding on the roster the way he's playing right now. I don't disagree that he'll probably find a way to be a backup again at some point. He'll probably get a, a cheap backup contract because he's a second round pick. He'll get another opportunity when he's done with the Bills. But if at going at this rate, he is literally not worth putting on the field because he just looks like he is just like a I don't know a traffic cone. Like you just go around him easily. It doesn't matter where he where he is, what he's doing. He's just something that you see, and then you can go past because he's been that bad. But it wasn't like it was just him. So no, Cody no. Ford has been bad, very bad. 
to the point where I am just openly admitting I was dead wrong about him the entire time. I thought he could turn into something. Boy, was I wrong. I think that's two, two weeks in a row now I've had to admit that I was just blatantly wrong about stuff. Gotta love yeah. that for me. Um, but like nobody else, like Mitch Morse was the only lineman who looked even remotely okay. Ike Bakker looked like what you would expect a guy who can't crack a starting lineup for two years or whatever, however long he's been on the team, looked like a guy who you would expect in that situation. Deion Dawkins looked like a backup left tackle at best on Sunday. I think he's much better than that. I'm not of like the, wow, he's nowhere near, like he's not the player we thought he was. I think he still is. I think he's probably recovering still. There's been a lot of talk about long-term effects, but then Daryl Williams, boy, was he bad too. Like you, you saw Manny, the the videos of him just not getting off the line of scrimmage. Look, the whole offense just didn't have the flow going right off the bat. The running backs didn't. Allen didn't. The old line didn't. It was just the wide receivers didn't. You know, it, it was just bad. And yeah. again, like Ike, Ike Botcher and Corey Ford, these are death guys. They're they're backups. And when you don't have when you don't have good depth. You know, like that's what happens. You play Ike Botcher and Cody Ford, but I think, I think, I think Beans, I think Bean and the coaching staff thought they had good depth. You know, Cody Ford yeah. is a former yeah. second rounder. Ike Botcher has been decent. You know, and you know they wouldn't have to play him as often. And obviously, injuries happen, and that's what you get. But I, I, I this game was bad overall for the offense, including the O line. But I think the O line has still been good enough this year like other than this game i think they've been okay they've i think they've had this would be the second like really really bad game from the offensive line because they were really really bad against the steelers too but outside of that i i would agree with you it's not like it's been abysmal to the point where you're like man we can't win yeah and then that's what i'm trying to point out is We've had a lot of people, you know, Bills Mafia World and other players saying, you know, let's get five new O linemen. No, <laughs> you have a decent O line. You just got to build depth around them. You know, you drafted Spencer Brown, who should help. You know, when he and he, he back, was playing relatively well. Well, yeah, it, yeah, when he and he's practicing now. He practiced today, so he might be back. So that you know, it was just a bad game. And that's what I, I'm going to stick in because I'm not that guy who says, you know, blow up the whole world and blow up the whole offense and yeah. the whole line. I just, they're backup guys and they have to play. So you, as a, as a coach, you have to be well prepared knowing that you got two backups in your starting five. Yeah. And I, I don't know if play calling necessarily did them any service with like pre-snap motion because we just yeah. haven't seen a whole lot of that this no. year. If you have an offensive line that's struggling, that's one way where you could help them out by potentially trying to get some guys moving and get the defense yeah. questioning what's going on before the snap. It's not like that's going to fix everything magically, yeah. Yeah. but it could it could at least help, help. out if you utilize yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, And the Bills just haven't utilized that. So I don't know. The offensive line... There's a lot of problems with it right now. If the Bills offensive line just literally is what it was on this past Sunday, then the team is going to have lots of problems moving forward. I don't believe that that's the true form of this offensive line. They're not a great offensive line by any means. Like, Please do not misquote me on that. They're They're not a great offensive line. I think they're average at best, but they're, they're serviceable where you can win with them. And when they get, I know, Feliciano has not been good. Yeah. That like he's not been good this year, but he but he's good enough. He's better than what we saw on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. When he is back, actually, was he? he no, he hurt. wasn't. The, yeah, he, he wasn't got. Hurt. Yeah, he wasn't. He's on the IR. That's yeah. why we had to start Ike Botcher. Yeah. And when so Cody when Ford. he gets back from IR, I think that'll help out. Yeah. A tiny bit, not much, not much, no. but it'll a make bit. a huge difference. But then Spencer Brown coming back, that should help out because he just – and it should help out. Even if it doesn't help out a ton in the passing game, it should help out in the running game because we've seen him be a really successful run blocker. So this offensive line, as bad as it was, let's just – let's try and throw that out. That's not what this offensive line is. They're not great. 
but they're a whole lot better than what we saw on Sunday. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you got you had two backups starting. Like Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then the the last thing, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I didn't like that we just did an all out blitz on that last punt. Like oh, you yeah. just you punted the game by not doing that. Put Isaiah McKenzie back there. Yeah. Let him fair catch it. Give your offense one chance. Give Josh Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, these guys that you supposedly believe in, give them one chance. I like my chances with the Bills offense out on the field trying to score a desperate touchdown a hell of a lot better than I like my chances of trying to block a punt. Like that doesn't happen very often. So why, why not give them a chance? I also thought that Isaiah McKenzie was having some decent returns in that game. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. If it wasn't for some penalties and stuff like that, but why not just give McKenzie a shot to run it back? Yeah, you know, or get it somewhere like I, yeah, I agree with you. It was kind of puzzling when I saw it. Then I was like, uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> if we're gonna lose nine to six, might as well lose like this. <laughs> yeah, it, it felt it very much felt like they just kind of gave up on that. So yeah. that that was really weird too. I didn't like that at all in the moment. It it felt like a, let's just get the hell out of here type of move. Yeah. Um, we I do we do have to talk about overreactions, and I don't want to get into this too yeah. much. Um. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I am on Twitter a fair amount during games, and I yeah. see a lot of overreactions. Yeah. And it's I, some people like live and die by every single play where it's like, oh, the Bills are the best. Oh, the Bills are the worst. Oh, the Bills. Yeah. Like, it's just back and forth and back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And there's sometimes you got to just find a little bit of a level. It's never as great as it seems, and it's never as bad as it seems. And so there's two things, there's two tweets that I saw that I, I wanted to bring up. And one of them, I think, is honestly much more egregious than the other. Um, and that'll be the second one that I get to. The yeah. first one's just like a, hey, maybe let's chill. And uh, Vic Carucci put out a tweet, let's slam the brakes on a Super Bowl bound Bills talk. And Buffalo Fanatics own Gage Aziz, um, he did quote tweet it. And I... Gage is a very passionate fan for anybody who does know him or follows him. He is like, he is that live and die by every play type of fan, which can be a whole hell lot of fun or it can just be miserable at times. And Gage was miserable on Sunday. Let me tell you. Yeah. But he he said, I don't see the team being a wild card contender better yet. A Super Bowl contender. I got, I mean, I got to pump the brakes on that. The bills, even if, the Bills don't have the best season or the season that we thought they were going to have. I think it's a absolute wild overreaction to say that they're not going to even be a wild card contender because I don't even think there's two legitimately consistently good teams in the AFC right now. Nobody in the AFC is consistently good or it has been consistently good. So the Bills having a down game and not looking like a good team because they did not look like a good team, does not take them out of contention. He followed that up with he thinks that the Patriots are going to win the AFC East, which I will say that it's not like that's an impossible thing. So I'm not saying that that can't happen. The Patriots have put themselves in a very good position, no doubt about it, and their defense is playing well. But their offense is still – like they just like the Bills, they have not actually beat anyone. Yes, they've played good teams close, but they have not won. So why are we all of a sudden looking at the Patriots and saying, oh, they're just going to win the AFC East and the Bills aren't because the Bills only beat these bad teams when the Patriots also only beat bad teams? It's it's not that big of a – like it, it's okay. Yeah. The Bills had a bad game. Let's Let's take it at face value and not try and extrapolate that over the course of the season. But like that, I saw plenty of people saying stuff like that. So it's not like this was just Gage. Gage was just the one that came up the most on my timeline. So I'm sorry, Gage. Like, I'm not trying to just directly call you out on this. But I I didn't know what else to do for it. But I I also kind of am. Yeah. Um, But like, I I love the fact that Gage is that passionate that he does literally live and die with every single play. I don't I don't know why. But like, I don't I used to be like that. I've I don't know, maybe talking about it consistently like this has helped calm me down. But there was, I will say, and I got to get this one out. There was a much worse, much, much, much worse overreaction, in my opinion. And I think a lot of people probably saw this one. It was from, hey, it's Camo. I I don't don't know. I'm not going to try and maybe Camo, 
cashier or something like that for the whatever at Hey, it's camo said two fumbles and two interceptions. Dude is washed. I hate to say it, but we have to move on from yeah. Josh and see what Mitch can do at this point. What the hell are we doing? Why? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Josh is not washed. It was a bad game. You can have bad games. We don't want to see Mitch Trubisky play unless we absolutely have to. And even then we don't actually want to see him play. We still want to see Josh play. It's just circumstances would have to call for that. Why do people every single time there's a single bad moment for Josh, why do they have to automatically go to, well, he's not actually a good quarterback. Man, can you, Manny, can you answer that for me? I, uh, you know me. I can't stand the extreme overreactions. I, yeah. I, I, I'm one of those. Look, I, I grew up, I'm 40 years old, and I've said this over again. I've been a fan since I was six years old. I've seen the high points, the low points, and the high points again. My thing is, like, when it comes to the playoffs, it's one game. You just got to get into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. If the Bills can get into the playoffs each year, they have a shot to win the Super Bowl. Because in one game, anything can happen. As we saw this Sunday when they lost to the Jags. Anything can happen. And my thing is, I want my team to be good enough to consistently, consistently make the playoffs. Because if they do, they always will have a shot to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. And and we're... By, by... The other thing is we're not saying like don't be disappointed by bad yeah. play. Yeah. Like no by no means I was extremely disappointed yeah, by so what I saw I. on Sunday. I was not happy. But, I was but, disheartened. But they still can get to the playoffs and give yeah. themselves a chance like you're saying. Don't, yeah. Don't don't, don't I, I always go, you know, like like who's jumping off the bandwagon today? <laughs> right? <laughs> like it's like, you know, it just it's 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 all right to be upset. Because they were supposed to win this game. Yeah, right? they were. But yeah. to say that, you know, let's, uh, you know, get five. The move on from line, Josh is just wild. The, the fire McDermott. The McDermott is the reason. Four years of him, three have been in the playoffs. You know how many times I saw the Bills in the playoffs before Sean McDermott came here? None. Since yeah. I was in high school. Oh, I was just none in general. I I don't remember yeah. seeing it so, because I don't have that good of like I don't have a good memory from when I was four. Yeah, <laughs> like so, like I haven't seen it since the the them in the playoffs since uh, the uh, what do you call it the Titans one. The, the we don't we don't like to name that. Here. Yeah, I can't even though actually it, honestly it doesn't actually bother me. Yeah, but. It, the ex, the overreactions are fine, you know. Like, oh, you know, the you know, Beasley dropped a pass, Sanders dropped a pass. They should be better. Yes, they should be better. Those are passes they probably should have caught. But to go like, you know, Allen has regressed. Allen's stats are the same as last year at this. Yeah, time. yeah, and similar. you wouldn't expect it because he it doesn't feel like it. But it's yeah. because what we saw at the end of Look, last season was so great. Like he turned on to a different level. At the end of last season, last year at this time we were what six and three or six and two, six and time? two I think I think six yeah, and two. So so there you go. Like we're and then we lost to the the Cardinals, right? Mm-hmm. So we did end up like somewhere around there. But like we're kind of this same stat line, you know. With Allen's stats are pretty similar, so he hasn't regressed. It just he's lost the games that he's lost this year. He's looked bad. That's basically it. Yeah, last year the games that he lost, he still looked okay. In this year, he's just looked bad in those three games he lost. But the games he's won, he's looked fantastic in it. Even the Titans game, I thought he he looked pretty decent. Yeah, I was gonna it. say two out of the three games because yeah. he, he still looked good for just about every drive yeah. except for one in the Titans game. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't understand any of it. I know yeah. there's it's easy to overreact in the moment. We all do it. Well, but I think I there is it, a line where it's too much of an overreaction. Yeah, and you're like, okay, let's let's just pull this back a little then. bit. Honestly, yeah. the extreme overreaction. I, I'm, I, not gonna, look, I'm not going to. Your words, won't. not mine. I'm not going. They're, they're I'm not my going words. That, I'm not going that far. You, you, I get you live and breathe your team, but you know, and I always say this to people: like, there's more to life than <laughs> the Buffalo Bills. And no, I Manny, it. there's there's not. Everybody needs to. It's only the Buffalo Bills. That's the we need people to think that so they continue watching this show. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean, right? Like, 
the, the I don't know. I, I do. I agree with you, though. Yeah. I, I, the extreme overreactions, it's just, it's too much. Like, you guys got to, like, you got to think straight. Like, they lost. Yes. Do you expect them to lose next week? Probably not. You're back. If they come out and win, all those fans that were saying that blow up the O-line, get new running backs, get Antonio Williams up, get Christian Wade up, uh, get get Mitch Trubisky to start, fire McDermott, fire Dable. Like those fans who were like saying get rid of those guys are going to be the same fans that are going to be like, yo, Dable's going to be the next head coach next year for another team. You know, Mitch Trubisky should be, he's the second best quarterback in this league. Allen's MVP. You know, Singletary is like motor Singletary now. You know, like, I, you just, know what? I was actually just thinking this, like the people who do overreact that much, it's almost like a win-win scenario because yeah. if, if you're right, you get to champion the fact that you were right. Then if yeah. the bills end up being this really bad team this year and Josh Allen, for some reason does actually regress, which his numbers once again are not saying he did. He has, yeah. they're saying that he's the same player. But if, if you're if you're an overreactor and you are right, you get to be like proud about being right and go brag about being right. And if you're wrong, you get to just be happy about the Bills being good and yeah. you just ignore the fact and that you were wrong. I, so maybe you know what? Maybe that maybe we've just been wrong about this whole thing. Maybe it's a happier life if you're if you overreact to everything. I don't know. I, I, I think those people are pretty miserable if they're overreacting like that. I just say, right, enjoy. Let's... this is my one thing. I just want to tell fans out there, enjoy your team. Yeah. Because I, I, li- I went through a phase since 99 to see this team. I was just hoping for four wins, even 500. I was like, yo, let's get to 500. That is the accomplishment. Enjoy your team because you don't know when that team is going to be the Detroit Lions again, yeah, or the the Buffalo Bills Buffalo of the early two thousands, yeah. yeah. Like I, you, you never know. So like, have fun it. with it while, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. I guess the the only thing I would say is once again, it's never as bad as it seems it is, yes. And it's probably never as great as it seems it is either, as we learned because three weeks ago, four weeks ago, the Bills were the best team in the NFL after they beat the Chiefs, but maybe the Chiefs aren't all that great. And the Bills have some issues, and it's okay because things can still get figured out. Yeah, so it's okay. Winners and losers of the week. My winner of the week, I have Josh Allen. Josh Allen is my winner of the week. Uh, and it is the Jaguars, Josh Allen. <laughs> because he was he was being called the other Josh Allen, and he was kind of like not like disregarded or anything like that because everybody acknowledged he's a very good football player. But if you Google Josh Allen, it doesn't matter. You don't have to specify team. It's our Josh Allen. It's Josh Allen, QB one bills, Josh Allen. It doesn't matter. You just look up Josh Allen. He's the guy who shows up. Josh Allen for the Jaguars was like, Hey guys, do not forget about me. And he just made plays everywhere. So he was, he was my biggest winner of the week. Um, I do have two others, but I'll let you go first. I, I was one of my winners of the week was this week was Josh Allen. I said it last week, the defensive player to watch is Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. And I, I stated like, he's going to think like, he's going to want to be like, yo guys, I I'm Josh Allen too. And you know, like, don't forget about me. I was seven pick it. overall and he did it. He came out and he, he came out balling. He, I think he got a what interception fumble. He, he was the first to get a sack on the same pl- same named player, get an interception on the same named player, and, and I think fumble recovery or forced yeah. fumble on the same. Yeah, yeah. He he played out of his mind. Yeah, he um, was out of his who, mind. So I think he was the the big winner of that. Who was who was your other winner of the week? Uh, the other winner of the week for me has to be still. Yeah, I think the. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. I think they they played a great game again. Uh, I think they were solid there. Even when we lost Tehran, I never felt like you know the secondary could get beat. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I thought those guys settled down Tredavious White and Levi Wallace, who I also thought had a great game. Uh, some bad calls on the secondary, which I kind of questioned at times, but overall, I thought I, every time I'm I'm never. 
not confident that the secondary will play good, especially with Poyer and Hyde leading the way for them. So I think they're a winner for me this they're, week. They're like a winner every single week. They're they're yeah. always gonna be a good choice. They're so calm too. Yeah. Like they're they're like especially Hyde. Hyde is so calm. He doesn't he's not as outspoken. He's very just, you know, get on the field, my play will do do the the rest. Yeah, that that is a good choice. Um, I I went with non Bills players for this. I have Juwan oh. Taylor, the Jaguars. No, no, no. That's I'm not saying anything yeah. about yours. That was a no, that no, was no. still a good pick. Yeah. Um, but I went with Juwan Taylor. He was my one of my other winners. Yeah. Um, because yeah. he yeah. is uh, like like Aaron Rodgers. He has been immunized. Um, except for he was immunized to getting false start penalties, and it's actually <laughs> working. Uh, I I don't know if you anybody who is on Twitter, probably saw this. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Chris Trapasso put out a video where it's just constant over and over and over again, not even just in the Bills game, but in previous games of Juwan Taylor false starting and not getting called for it and coaches getting upset about it and the refs doing nothing. Apparently, he has not been called for a false start all year. I don't know what kind of superpowers he has (laughs) that allows this to happen, but he is, as you did at the end of, last week's show hashtag winning right now so he he would be one and then the other one i have is underdogs because there were so many underdogs that won last week yeah the jags the broncos the titans the browns the giants and the falcons all won as underdogs incredible if you if you put in a bet on all of them winning money line would have been an insane payout uh loser of the week i my first one is Cody Ford supporters for everything that we talked about before. If you were or are a Cody Ford supporter, um, like myself, I was a Cody Ford supporter, you, then you are a loser of the week. Uh, but the I think the biggest loser of the week right now is fans because of the taunting rule and how much it's impacting the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and even more so to learn that Sean McDermott was on the committee that implemented or brought that rule to the NFL's attention. Um, that was really disappointing to see, to be completely honest, because it's just it's been a really bad rule that's negatively impacted the game. And it feels it kind of feels like this rule is trying to take the emotion out of a sport that like you, you have to be able to play with emotion. You have to be able to control your emotion. But like even just looking at I, Levi Wallace got called for an unsportsman like still to the, like to this point, no idea what it was for. And then Cassius Marsh, it was obviously the biggest yeah. kind of talking point of the week at that point was like, what did he do? He, the NFL came out and said that he stared at the, the Steelers He's bench and that was yeah. enough. You're not even allowed to stare after a play, not even at the player, at the, at the bench. the way he did it. I, yeah, and it nothing about what he did looked bad. And then obviously you get into the whole thing with like the, the refs in general have been bad, but the fans are losing out because of the yeah, taunting rule. Yeah, so that yeah. that would be my loser of the week. Who do you have? Uh, I got two quarterbacks. Uh, okay. First one is Mac Jones and his awful. That's play a good one. On yeah, on the defensive line. Um, good call. I am surprised that the league hasn't stated anything about it or made a statement about it because you could. See, he's he's trying to twist that pretty good. I don't know if he's trying to twist it so the guy will fall or what he's trying to do, like what his thought process with it. Because I don't think Mac Jones has come out and talked about it either. Oh, and he so, won't. He, he won't. Yeah. If I was Mac Jones, I wouldn't either, though. Yeah. That's the thing. So, if you make a dirty play like that, you don't want to go and cop to it or yeah. act like you didn't because there's video proof that you did. Yeah. So it, it, was a, yeah. it was a loser play. It was extremely poor sportsmanship kind of play for me. It was, um, I mean, you heard Brian it, Burns it, say happy hunting. Yeah. Like it, I, I think a lot of players, defensive players are going to be looking out for Mac Jones now uh, after that. I, so I didn't even realize this, the guy that he's playing this week. Well, actually two of them, I think. Yeah. yeah Cause Jadavion Clowney is, yeah. I think he's, he's playing. Yeah. Um, well, he's killed a man on a football field before we all saw that play at yeah. Michigan. That, that guy got up and walked away and everything, but, like, his soul left his body. Yeah. So he's capable of that. Yeah. yeah. But then, like, Miles Garrett, he, he might just hit you in the face with a helmet. You never yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's that's what he's got coming next yeah. week. So I'm sure I'm, there's defense. That, like, nobody on defense is yeah. going to be happy with him. So that, yeah. that was a really good choice. Yeah. Um, My I, other loser 
is Sam Darnold. Not that oh, yeah. he, he's just seen ghosts, <laughs> but now he's going to see the ghost of uh, of Cam Newton past because Cam Newton just signed with the Carolina Panthers and he's coming back for a reunion. I don't know if Cam Newton will play. We don't know because P.J. Tucker, I think is his name, I think. Is that the backup quarterback? I can't even remember. Uh, P.J. Walker. Walker, yeah. So I would assume he'll start this week. Yeah. And then maybe and Cam then, plays the following game or something like that. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know if Darnell will be able to capture his starting job back. So it, it will be. I don't think he will. But I think he's the loser because, you know, this, you know, and they signed him to a pretty good contract. So it's not like they signed him to be, you know, vet minimum. It was a pretty uh, decent contract. So I'm sorry, Sam. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe the Buffalo Bills will sign him next year for no, that backup no, job. No, please, God, I, no. I, I, I'm just saying it. You never. Nope, know. Nope. Don't you? Don't you dare put that out there. I, okay. Oh, so, so we got to get to the bets. We've we've definitely run yeah. long on our yeah. our initial segments, but yeah. I do have to. I there was one loser of the week that I forgot to mention that I was sure. planning on doing, and I'd completely forgotten about. But my loser of the week is also going to be Brandon Bean. He has constructed a roster that has a lot of skill position players that are really good. And he's also gone along with Sean McDermott in that they have kind of that similar philosophy of trust the process. We believe in the guys that we have in the building. But I think where they've gone wrong is they've placed too much belief in those players when there is evidence to show that they shouldn't have. Like, it's not like the offensive line was perfect last year. It was a lot better last year, but there it's like, there was people who were like, let's, let's move on from Feliciano. Most notably, I think that we can think of because we interact with them. The most would be Ryan from five, eight, five report. He was heavy on that train. Um, that I, there was definitely others, but I don't, I'm, I'm not remembering who it was specifically right now, but Brandon Bean decided to run it back with the same group of players. It's pretty much the same offense that the bills had last year. And right now, as it stands, that doesn't look like it was the right choice. Not because there's not good players on the offense, not because Josh Allen or Stefan Diggs or Cole Beasley or any of those guys are bad, but because the offensive line, they've done what everybody has said Josh Allen was going to do. And they've regressed, not just a little bit. It's not like they did just, Oh, we took a step back. They've like, done a whole long jump backwards. Like they took a running start and jumped as far backwards as they could right now. That's the way they're playing. As we said earlier, they can always fix it, but it seems like it was just a weird move to ignore that the interior of the offensive line was a problem last year. And that was where the line's problem was. And then you come out and you say, well, the running game isn't good enough and we need to be better. Well, you should have addressed the offensive line. And then you see there's been issues in the passing game, partially because the offensive line has not been good enough. If only there was a player in the second round. And I, I want to say I do like Basham as, with what he could be, but it, he's been at, inactive, so it's impossible to ignore this. If only there was a player that we could have drafted in the second round who could start on the interior of the line because that never like that it wouldn't have, it, there wouldn't but, be a player who's available who but, is somehow just one of the better guards in the league right or a better interior offensive lineman in the league right now Creed Humphrey I believe he's playing center but it's it's not a good look when you have that for yeah. some reason yeah. Brandon Bean has been really good at getting talent or De Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott have been really good at developing the talent at other positions but when it comes to the line I don't know what's going on is it them? Is it Bobby Johnson? I don't know. That's an I, issue. Let's I, let's. I yeah. just want to say one thing against uh, to the other way is even if we drafted Creed Humphrey, we don't know how Creed Humphrey would be here. He could be. I, he could be horrible. We don't know, right? But like, he's starting, and that's that's where I the, I just I don't, starting, I don't. He's starting with a different five, right? There's four other guys with him. And I'm not, yeah, no, no, no. I, I don't think anybody who's saying that we should have drafted Creed Humphrey, which by the way, I was saying that before the draft. I, I just, you know, I, I was, yeah, he was, I'm he was the guy saying, I wanted I'm to just pick. Saying they felt he, I'm not saying he would have been. And that's what I'm saying is why he's the loser of the week because he shouldn't have. And then he went and drafted two tackles when the tackle position was supposedly set. So it it just seems Tackle like a is weird also philosophy. The most expensive 
position it is, in the offensive but, line. But like, so why not developed- go grab a why not go grab a guard after you drafted a tackle? Why draft tackle tackle? That I don't know. I don't know. I once again, I I I don't. I'm not. I'm not somebody who likes to question Brandon Bean all that often, yeah, I, but I, we are definitely at a point where it's reasonable to question yeah, I think, what I he's think, been doing on the offensive I line. I think so, after this year, after this year, this there's summer, gotta be changes. There's gotta be changes, right? And yeah. that's where that's where we're gonna see the real Brandon Bean if he steps up. Yeah. Okay. We've we've gone way, 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 yeah. way, way too long, partially because of yeah, I mean we we're we're still working through this. Yeah. We're, Manny and I are still working through how to keep this a little bit shorter. Um five best bets of the week. Manny, bad week last week, one and four, nine and sixteen overall. Struggling, man, struggling. Yeah, I, I am struggling. I am two and I went two and three last week, twelve and thirteen since week five. Casey went three and two, put together another winning week, seventeen and eight. Yeah. Since Week five. So Casey's been crushing it. Thank yeah. you, Casey, for holding up the show because, oh boy, Manny and I have struggled. So Casey's best bets of the week. He's got the Browns plus one and a half against the Patriots. He's got the Falcons plus nine against the Cowboys. Chargers minus three against the Vikings. Raiders minus two and a half against the Chiefs. And the Rams minus four against the 49ers. We do have a little bit of overlap with my picks and his. Uh, it's only with, I believe, one game, though. Yeah, only one game. I, I also am taking the Browns to cover. I got them at plus two over the Patriots. Uh, so a little bit different. I, I just, I'm going to ride the wave here. I don't believe that the Patriots are as good of a team as they have shown recently because they've been playing against inferior competition and not just inferior competition to them, but like bad competition across the league. So I'm going to trust that when they play a team that is as good as the Browns are without Odell, for whatever reason, they're a better team without him. I'm going to trust that the Browns continue to be that really good team because they've done it for two seasons now. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I got the Browns covering two points there. I got the Lions covering nine and a half versus the Steelers. I think the Steelers are a good team, not a great team. Like they should have been able to handle the Bears and they had to be handed the win by some really bad penalty calls. So I just don't trust the Steelers all that much. I trust them to win. But the Lions are also a covering machine this year. They've, I think it's been like every other week they've covered. It's gone back and forth. And they did not cover their last game, so they're going to cover this week. And nine and a half is a, it's a large spread. Um, so I'm going to trust them when they've had that pattern. And then I'm going to completely flip my philosophy here, and I'm going to go the Buccaneers are covering 10 points against the Washington football team. And it's because the football team's defense is just that bad. Yeah. The, the, the Bucs should be able to – do whatever they want offensively against them. I, I don't I'd be I'm not 100% confident that they can't get a backdoor cover in this scenario cuz it's not like the Bucks defense is all that great either, but like they should be able to build up enough of a lead to be able to cover that. And then I got the Saints and the Titans going over 44 and a half and I got the Cowboys and the Falcons going over 54 and a half. I the Titans are my over team for the year. Just want to get that out of the way, I think I've gone with their over the last like three weeks and three or four weeks, and they've won every single one except for one. So I'm either two and one with their over or three and one with their over. Their over is just hitting. They're scoring points, and the other team is scoring points. So with a 44 and a half point spread, I know they're missing Derrick Henry. I know the Saints defense is good, but I'm I'm just gonna keep trusting that and hope it doesn't bite me. And then the Cowboys and the Falcons, the Cowboys offense cannot be as bad as it was last week. Yeah. The Falcons offense has been really good. Matt Ryan, I didn't realize this. Casey actually texted me this earlier today. Uh, Matt Ryan has the top QBR in the league over the last three weeks. That offense is rolling right now. Cordero Patterson is playing great. Their offense as a whole is playing great. And I, I feel like 54 and a half at that point, like I just, it's begging me to take that line, which sometimes isn't the best, but I, I just don't see the Cowboys offense being bad enough to not get there. So those are my picks. Manny, what are yours? So <clears throat> I'm going with the, I thought about the Dallas Atlanta game. Uh, that was one. And I think Casey did the Minnesota and chargers one. And yep. I, I was thinking of that one too, so, but I went with five other ones. I went with the Buccaneers winning by nine. I got them at nine and a half. Oh boy. So uh, I think the Buccaneers are going to win. Uh, by 10. Uh, I think uh, uh, 
your face just looks a little <laughs> different there. I am, Did you- I, well, I okay so i'm I'm gonna be real real honest with you right now yeah, yeah casey and i did have a talk um about maybe i just let you go first and maybe i just take the opposite of your picks and give give that a try because that that's been a pretty good it's been a sure, pretty good whatever, thumb guys, right now whatever <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna message casey after this uh telling people to pick a opposite of my picks. Um, so I'm taking, fade Manny. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking Tampa Bay 10, nine and a half. I think Washington's defense is pretty bad. I think mm-hmm. Tampa Bay takes control. Uh, you know, Brady does his Brady stuff and uh, they win. Uh, I'm taking Arizona over Carolina at 10 and a half. I think we know that offense is really good. The defense is pretty good as well. Mm-hmm. Murray balls out. And Carolina, man, they have no offense. Their defense can do only so much. And with P.J. Walker playing, I don't know what kind of offense you're going to see from Carolina. So I think 10.5 for Arizona. I got the uh, Seattle Seahawks uh, uh, covering 3.5 on Green Bay. Uh, We still don't know if uh, uh, Rodgers is playing and if Jordan Love's playing. And if we saw what Jordan Love can do last week, it's not that much and i and with uh carson uh coming out of ir this week and i think wilson potentially wilson yeah yeah yeah, not totally sure but potentially yeah potentially you could have both of them back in this game three and a half points to cover that's pretty good i think they can do it they might even win if both of those are there you're taking a chance but it's reasonable Yeah. yeah yeah So uh, that's uh, my third one. Uh, fourth one, I got the Rams at minus four against San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco, there's something wrong there. If we want to yeah. talk about a team that has issues throughout the team, that's the San Francisco 49ers. I think everybody expected them to be better this year, and there's something wrong in that system. Rams, I don't know if OBJ will play this week. I don't think he is, but if he does... Uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting to watch that offense in, in Los True. Angeles. So I take them, and then I'm going with the Vegas Raiders to cover two and a half against Kansas City. I think that's my the big risky one if you want to take it. I think uh, right. I think they've done it before. They played they play Kansas City really well, and I think you know Kansas City in the last couple of weeks have played not so good uh, defenses. Uh, so they've taken advantage of, they've been able to outscore the other teams. Where I think the Raiders are, are a surprisingly good defensive team. They're they're better than what most people think they are. And their offense, you know, their offense is decent. I know, I know Henry Ruggs is a big loss now for them. But, you know, Deshaun Jackson, I think, is there now. He's going to replace Ruggs with the deep threat. And then you got, I think, one of the most underrated receivers right now on the Raiders, which is Hunter Renfro, who's, I think, Cooper Cup 2.0 in the making. Uh, I think that I think they can upset Kansas City, and they got a decent run game with Josh Jacobs. So yeah, yeah, they they're gonna have a chance. And here, I so here's I gotta we gotta discuss this, me and you, real quick. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this between the two of us and just let it let it be whatever we decide here. Sure, the Raiders are not the favorites. They're, they have a. Yeah. They have to cover the two and a half. Yeah, it's yeah, plus two point yeah. five. Yeah, plus two. Casey, Casey texted me, Las Vegas minus two point five. We have to. We have to keep it right. He said yeah. minus two point five. So yeah, he's just yeah. rolling with an alternate spread. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know where he's getting his spread. From. I don't know. I, I look I, if I have him at he, plus two and a half. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's looking at with that. But yeah, it's yeah. that's what he said. That's what we put out. I, Casey, I'm sorry. But it is what it is. It is what I, I it call, is. Casey, I call that karma. <laughs> <laughs> karma for doing so well. <laughs> All right, let's let's get into the the game this week. He's um, like, and you know, Casey's probably thinking, 
<laughs> he's probably like, Dad, these guys suck so badly. I'll make my own spread and I'll be. Oh, he, he won't even notice that it happened. He won't even notice that it happened. He's going to come back and be like, no, I won that. I'm like, no, you texted me. This is what you said you wanted your pick to be. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's um, so all right. cocky now making his own He is. Spread. But you know what? He I, I will give him props for this. He deserves yeah, it for yeah, being as, yeah, as good for sure. as he's been up to this point. Sure. Um, all right. Jets versus the Bills. The Bills are wearing their all white jerseys this this week. They are two and three when they wear just the white tops. Just gonna put that out there. Don't love that, but I think we can get it up to three and three this week. Um, all right, offensive game changers for the Jets. Who do you have as your offensive game changer? And I'm not gonna let you say nobody because it didn't work before. Uh, honestly, I, I'm going to say Mike White. I, he's coming back from surgery or I'm not surgery, but like an injury, his his injury. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see if he can play the, like how he is throwing the ball. Um, because that's going to be key. He looked good when he played. Uh, I, you know, I can't even say nothing bad about him because every time he's taken the snap, he's actually looked good. So, um, I think he's a game changer for them. I think their rookie wide receiver, Rogers. I think uh, you are you are thinking of Green Bay. Their rookie right wide receiver is Elijah Moore. Oh yeah, Elijah Moore. Yeah, I'm thinking of Rogers on Green Bay. Uh, Elijah Moore has been phenomenal the last two weeks. Uh, he's looked really good with Josh Johnson and Mike White before that. And so those are the two I think key guys uh, that that the Bills will have to watch out for uh, that can change the game. Yeah, I, I didn't put Mike White just because I, I think that's kind of like a – it should be technically a given. They yeah, named him yeah, the starter. Yeah, yeah. The weird thing is I I kind of would be more nervous if Josh Johnson was playing. Not that I'm not – not that I'm not like 100% confident or anything, but I for some – I just have this feeling that Mike White – kind of shot his load that first game, and he doesn't <laughs> have that yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, so I – I think the Bills can make some plays off of him. Yeah. But the weird thing about this Jets team, they've actually been scoring some points. Yeah. Some of it was in garbage time as of late. But they've been scoring points despite this being a rookie-driven offense with Michael Carter out of the backfield, Elijah Moore as a wide receiver. It's not like those are their only two actual yeah. players. Like Corey Davis, he's he's a good player. He's he, yeah. I mean, he was one of their big signings. Hasn't panned out the way they thought he would. And then Jamison Crowder in the slot is he's one of, he's a very good slot receiver, very yeah. underrated slot receiver. Um, but it's still I still think it is the quarterback Mike or the quarterback Michael Carter and then Elijah Moore. Those are that's kind of like the trio, and I think that it's the same no matter what quarterback yeah. you put back there. Yeah, whether it is Mike White, which as of right now it is, or if it ends up having to be Josh Johnson because of a, a switch in the game or anything. Those are the three guys. It's kind of like a triangle offense. It's running through them. It's weird. I, you don't see offenses that are rookie driven the way they are, yeah. the wide receiver and running back. But they, those I, are two really good players. The Bills are going to have to create pressure yeah. because the and it's going to have to come. I think it has to come from the right side of the Bills defense, the left side of the Jets offense. Because Makai Becton, their best offensive lineman, is not playing. He's out. He's on injured reserve. Yeah. So. Like they have to create pressure. They have to. They have so to. We, 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 yeah, there. yeah. They have to. Yeah. Just, just a weird kind of offense in general when you look at it. Because I, I do think that that offense has potential down the road if they can get their quarterback situation figured out. They got some guys who could play. Yeah, yeah. But they don't have. They don't have a guy who can get them the ball consistently. Yeah, that's the big question with the Jets. It's it's always been quarterback, Sam Darnold, Mike White, Josh Johnson, mm -hmm. whoever has been playing there. Uh, it's always been that case. But how long has Josh Johnson been playing? I didn't even know. I think this is his 13th Josh. year. Yeah, like that guy's been <laughs> hanging. He's been all forever. over the place. He kind of reminds me of Josh Freeman. Remember Freeman? He was everywhere. Oh, I was going to say, it is like he's like Fitzpatrick. He's just yeah. play one year with every team and move yeah. on. Yeah, like uh, I didn't even know he was on the Jets until he yeah. came on as a starter. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I think you have to put pressure on that side, especially with Becton out. Um, you got to maybe pressure. I think Cam Lewis is on the active roster. Maybe use him in that Teron Johnson kind of spot where, mm -hmm. you know, you 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 get the quarterback, especially a rookie quarterback. You said this last week, right? Have them guessing 
oh, is Cam Lewis going to come hit me? Is Micah Hyde coming? Like, who's are, – are they going to fall back? So you get that quarterback guessing, uh, it might result in some takeaways. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll have to – yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it goes better than it did last week, even though, once again, the defense played well. But yeah. moving on, uh, yeah. defensive game changer. I have, I have, I only have two guys written down here. So I want to see if there's anybody else that you have listed because first and foremost, Marcus May is out. He's yeah. not playing for the Jets yeah. defense. It, it it's a huge hit for their secondary because he is by far the best player in their secondary. The two players I have listed are Quinn and Williams and then C.J. Mosley. Did you have yeah. anybody else outside of those two? No, I had C.J. Mosley. I think he's – C.J. Mosley has been a stud linebacker for years. He's – you never want to count him out, even though he's getting a little bit older. Uh, you can never count him out as a guy who can make a big game-changing play in that offense, especially from that line, very important linebacking position. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I had him as well. But Quinton Williams is a great one too. He's he's a threat. Like we saw today, what Josh Allen could do on the on the the other Josh Allen yeah. did last week. And you know, Quinton Williams, another guy. If you don't if you don't watch out for him, he's gonna hurt you too. So he he can't. He has that potential to be yeah. a game wrecker type of player. Yeah, we haven't just like just like Josh Allen on the Jaguars. We haven't seen that week in and week out every single game that he's played in. Yeah. But you know for a fact, if if you don't if you don't actually block this guy, he's going to wreak havoc on your game yeah. plan. I, I think the weird thing is like their their defense doesn't have all of these big time names on it. And their secondary is bad, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, that's but their front seven is like they still play well. That front yeah. seven is playing well this year. Yeah, so I like the Bills are going to have to. Bills are going to have to figure out an offensive line fix yeah. this week. That's why Brown, if Brown can come back this week, obviously Feliciano is out still because of the three game IR. But uh, if Spencer Brown can come back, that's a big help. Even though yeah. we might not think he's a rookie, he's come back. He's going to help uh, place you know whoever Ike or Cody, whoever he replaces there, but. You know, it's going to be important. We saw what Josh Allen did last week. We don't want that to happen again. Yeah, no, I mean, we we definitely want him protected better than yeah. he was last week. We want the yeah. offense more in sync than they were last week. Yeah. And it's going to start with how do how do the Bills defend pretty much against the the Jets front seven? Like, how do yeah. they go do against they that, that when I, yeah when yeah. they're they've struggled? Like, no yeah. doubt about it, the Bills yeah. offensive line has struggled. So, yeah. how do they figure out? how to block and maintain the offensive think, line when they just like the, the front seven for the Jets has played well. The Bills offensive line has looked gettable. Got to figure something out. Got to put a game plan in that's going to help everybody on the offensive line. Part of that, Kyle, is on the coaching staff. I know that we didn't talk about it, but uh, I think Micah Hyde came out, said that we weren't ready for this. Game. Mm-hmm. And then, I think one of the players on defense on the Jags stated that they looked over at the sidelines. They just didn't have that energy that the Bills usually do when they play. And so that kind of makes me think the coaching staff didn't really have – they thought that this was an easy cake victory to me. That's what it seems like, that they – they made a game plan that don't worry about it. We'll win this no matter what. It's going to be pretty easy. And that kind of went to the players as well, where, you know, we got this. It's nothing big. As we saw any given Sunday, you want to be prepared. And Quinn Williams and CJ Mosley. Uh, uh, <laughs> Quinn Williams and CJ Mosley are two of their biggest players on that front seven. And that was a big issue against the Jags. You got to make sure that your team is ready. And I think McDermott's press conference, he said he's going to make sure these guys are ready for this week. Yeah, I, I think there's been a big mentality change for the entire team. Yeah. And people didn't, there was, a, there was a lot of people who were like, no, why this can't be the wake up call. Last week should have been the wake up call, or two weeks ago should have been the wake up yeah. call. Um, because I put out a tweet saying, like, nobody wants it, but yeah. this was a wake up call for the Bills team because. 
yeah, I mean, we preach about how great the culture is and yeah. and how great the team is, and but if if you're not showing up ready to play, that's a yeah. problem. It, the and then this was that was the wake up call. It doesn't matter yeah. Yeah. what team you're playing against. It doesn't matter if it's the Jaguars. It doesn't matter if it's the Jets. It doesn't matter if you're going up against the Patriots in Gillette or if you're going up against the Chiefs or the Titans. It doesn't matter if it's the Rams. It doesn't matter what game it is. If you don't show up ready to play, you're not going to win. That's how it is for every team. That's why there's upsets. We saw it across the league last yeah. week. Six or seven teams weren't ready. They, they, yeah, they weren't ready. And so the Bills have to have that mentality change of, yeah. no, we're, we're showing up ready. It doesn't. We don't care Much. who it is. They're professional football players too. Yeah. Are we better than them? Yes. Yes, we are. But, we still but we're not going to take them lightly. We yeah. still have to prepare like they're one of the best yeah. teams in the league because if we don't, they could get us. They could get, think, they could catch a W, and we can't let that happen. I always tell my friends uh, like about the AFC Championship, and they're like, your team made the AFC Championship? Well, last year we were kind of the hunter. We were the guys yeah. who were gunning the team. This year we're the hunted, <laughs> right? It's a different mentality of being the hunter or being hunted. And yesterday they, they let their guard down, and last week they let their guard down and came out. But I always tell them like sometimes I think that – the Bills made the AFC Championship a little too early, and it put a lot of pressure on that team to now do that again. Uh, so I always tell my friends, I I sometimes think, was it a year too early for this? Oh, team we're to really- we're gonna we're gonna disagree here. I yeah. I don't think I think it's never too early. No, to I, have I, I get it, but I think as long as you have the right people in place. Yeah, I think I think sometimes that you know like. You made it that far, and now the pressure's on you. But can this team handle that pressure? And that's what we're finding out this week, that there are some weeks yeah. where they can not handle I, it. The, this is going to be really, really corny, and I get that. But, like, yeah. pressure makes diamonds. And yeah, if I, you're I, not I, a diamond, the pressure is going to crush you. Yeah. So if the Bills can't handle the pressure of expectations, then they're not the team that we thought they were. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I would – vehemently disagree with you with that one. I don't think there's a thing of you can't you like making it to the AFC championship game too early, just because if that's the I, case, I they were never like, meant to make it there in the first place. If that's yeah. the case, they yeah. were never meant to have success if yeah. they can't handle the pressure. I, yeah. I, so I, guess what I know what you're saying. I, yeah. But I, I also get what you're saying where it's like, yeah. was, did they, it's pretty much you're saying, did they become yeah. too confident in themselves? Yes. Yes. Which I think there's a potential that last week they just showed up too confident in themselves. Um, yeah. All right. What do, what do we have next? What do we have next? We got keys to the game. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a key to the game? Make sure Josh Allen has time to make his plays. <laughs> that protection. Is protection. Um, I think protection for him for throwing the ball, but I also think protection for the, the run game to actually develop. Um, I, I still think run game is important and, uh, and McDermott said it himself. So I, I'm not the only one seeing that is uh, McDermott saying that the run game is important and we, we need to get that run game going. And I don't think when I say run game, I don't think like, you, you know, Derek Henry or, you know, like those the type of run games, but, you know, getting to a second and, you know, five, you know, that manageable mm-hmm. down. That's what I need the run game for, um, is that manageable down, you know, a third and three, you know, and they had a couple of those last week. Um, but I think that's the two key games and make sure that guys like Quinn and Williams and CJ Mosley don't affect the game. And so that comes on to the O-line and, and Dable and his offensive philosophy for this game. Yeah, and I'm actually going to stick with the offensive philosophy for this um, because I, I trust in the defense. I do. I, I'm yeah, not. I do too. I'm not nervous about the defense being able to show up and play well enough to get a win because they have done that consistently so far this year. They only really have one game that they didn't play Titans. really well, and it was against the Titans. Uh, yeah, and even so, like they, I mean, they played really well in the first half outside of one play, and then they struggled after that. So, like, I. This defense has been here all year, which is why I think the key to the game is still the offense. Yes, the defense has to get pressure. Yeah. But my key to the game in terms of philosophy, 
I, I want, I'm going to say one thing first and foremost, Stefan Diggs. I don't think we need any explanation there. Just key to the game, Stefan Diggs. Leave it at that because he's that important. Yeah. But my, my actual key to the game that I think I want to talk about more is the motion. We talked about this earlier in, in the yeah. show. There hasn't really been much motion in the Bills offense. Pre-snap motion, whatever. Like They yeah. just haven't used that as much. And last year, it felt like the Bills were using that all the time. And it's not like every time they went to it, it was the most successful thing ever. Yeah. Sometimes it fails you. But having that motion, that could be potentially what helped the offensive line be better last year versus this year where they're just not. It might be something that opens up the offense. And then who knows, maybe it's something where Isaiah McKenzie, who was – he, he was good in this offense last year, and he's been non-existent this year. They've pretty much relegated him to Andre Roberts' role last year, which is you're a kick returner and nothing else. Yeah. We don't want you touching the ball on offense, which I just I don't understand. Getting him the ball player. in a jet sweep scenario could be something that helps get the running game going a little bit, get the passing game going a bit, help the offensive line not have to worry about guys just running in their face the entire game because they're like, oh, wait, no, the ball's going this way. And it just makes guys think a little bit. Use that motion, whether it's pre-snap motion that is a jet sweep or not, in order to help the team, the offense, Josh Allen, the offensive line, everybody, help everybody just have a little bit more success because it is statistically proven that when you have more pre-snap motion, your offense is going to be, even if it's just a little bit, going to more more than likely be more successful than if you did not have free step motion. So you got to use that. Yeah. I don't know where that changed, why that changed, when that changed, but Dable has to implement more pre-snap motion. I would love it to come in the form of Isaiah McKenzie. We we talk about like having uh, the defense come in and try to get the quarterback guessing. I, I believe the same thing has to be done with the offense. Like you said, you know, you know, have – Isaiah do motion, you know, make that defense mm -hmm. guess, like, are they going to him? Or are they not? Like, because right now, and I, I don't know if you said it or Rico said it or the Bills guy, I don't know who said it, but somebody said it. on It's too predictable right now. It is. It's it, too it, predictable. It, it, everybody knows what you're going to do. And that I think is the biggest problem is if you become a predictable offense, we're kind of seeing it with Mahomes right now in Kansas City, where you become a predictable offense. People can understand how to stop you. You got to bring in more, uh, you know, motions and stuff like that to do it. Kansas City still is trying to figure it out. And I, I'm hoping that that Buffalo, like Kansas City, will figure it out and get moving. Because right well, now... We're not hoping that Kansas City figures it out. Just Buffalo. Yeah. But no, but what I'm saying is like teams have figured it out, right? Yeah. And and you, if other teams can figure it out, so can you. And and I think it's just become predictable. Like I'm at home and I can tell what they're about to do. <laughs> when I when mm -hmm. when GMs at home can start predicting your plays, you Couch got some share issues. GMs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When when we can start predicting your plays, then there's got to be some changes happening. Yeah. Yeah, I think we I think everybody wants to see whatever everyone's going to disagree on what yeah. specifically needs to change. Yeah, but something but I think to. everybody kind of has that same feeling of there needs to be a slightly different offensive philosophy going into this game whether it's how they're attacking each individual play, how they're calling each individual play, yeah. what they're doing before the play, it doesn't matter. Something something just needs to change. So You know what's we'll, so funny we'll Kyle that. is that Last year, everybody hated the jet sweep, and now people are desperately calling like, for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, jet sweep. So, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that is, I didn't even think about that. Um, all right, game prediction. I have two predictions that I'm making, okay. and it goes in line with my keys of the game. Yeah, I I think Stefan Diggs finally has that big game. The Jets don't have a good secondary. They don't have somebody who should be able to cover him. If Stefan, if Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs are on the same page right now, Stefan Diggs will have a big game this week. We saw the success he can have when you go to him. We know it from last year. It's nothing new. Just hasn't really been as consistent of a connection this year so far. We haven't had that real big game yet. It's got to happen at some point. 
I think this is a week it could happen. I got Stefan Diggs going for 10 catches, 150 yards, and a touchdown. And then I'm also going to throw in, look, that's that's jet sweep. We have not seen anything really come from it other than a Dawson Knox touchdown that got called back. I'm rolling with an Isaiah McKenzie touchdown this week. Uh, I got three sacks by the D line. I think I think this is going to be a bounce back game for the D line. I think Greg Russo gets two of those, and maybe AJ Epinenza or Ed Oliver gets the other one. Uh, so I think it's going to be a solid game from the D line this week, especially if they take advantage of the right side, like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one, I'm going to say I had Isaiah McKenzie touchdown, but I think it might be a special teams touchdown from Isaiah McKenzie. He's been he's been shooting pretty good out of that uh, punt return, kick return. I think he's he's due for one here. Uh, he's been he's been itching to get one through there. So all right, there we all right. Actually, you know what? I'm going to throw one more in. Sure, I got a Trey White interception. Trey right. White has. I mean, he's had one or two interceptions this year. Yeah. I think he gets another one this week because if it's Mike White, I can't remember who I heard saying or saw saying this, but Mike White has, I mean, when he was playing, yeah, he, he doesn't always put the ball in the best spot. So I'm sorry for not crediting who kind of put this information out there, but he doesn't always put the, the ball in the right spot. Guys like Levi, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, Trey White, they're going to have opportunities as long as they're in the right spot to make a play on the ball. And we know how good Trey White is. He hasn't let up a touchdown yet this year. He is one of the best corners in the NFL. He is one of, if not, the best zone corner in the NFL. This week, I want to see Trey White make a play. I want to see him get an interception. I I, I need that from our all-pro cornerback. I need that from him. He's a guy who, like, he, you see him make a big play, yeah. it juices everybody up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw another one in there as a Trey White interception. Now, Manny, we need a score prediction because I think my I guess we'll we'll cover the over under and the spread after. But what is your score prediction? I'm going 27 13. The Bills 27 13. Okay, so you have it because at, at the moment the Bills are favored by 13. You have the Bills covering the spread yeah, yeah. and not hitting the over because the over is at 47.5. Yeah. I am somewhat similar. I have the Bills winning 27 to 16. I think the Jets are going to have a couple of semi successful yeah. drives yeah. Um, that probably end in field goals. And I think it's probably going to be a closer game than we want to see. And like, I think a lot of people are thinking this game, the Bills are just going to come out and they're going to light them up because it's the Bills and they have to. But we can't just ignore the fact that there are still some issues and they do still have to figure some things out. So it's not going to just be like, oh, this is a perfect team again. They, like they still have f- things to figure out. It's a good get right game. It's a good game to figure those things out. Yep. But it, I don't expect everything to be absolutely perfect, which is why I'm only rolling with 27-16. I trust in the defense. I'm going to trust in the offense to make a whole lot more plays than they made last week which has me at the Jets cover the spread painstakingly. I hate that I'm saying that, Yeah, but 13 is a big spread. So I got the Jets covering the spread and I got the Bills going – or the Bills and the Jets going under 47 and a half. Yeah, I, I agree with you. With the injuries that the Bills might have with Teron Johnson, Tremaine Edmonds, and so on, we don't know if Knox is going to play, but he's – seems like he's practicing so Uh there's a little bit that i think he'll keep it close and and uh yeah it's well we'll see look i I don't want to bounce back i do not want to be be. talking to you again next week off a loss that's i think that's fair to say we both can agree on that we do not want to be talking to each other off a loss next week (laughs) oh okay uh, so then last question is this is this a must win or a can't lose we'll end it with that is this a must-win game or a can't-lose game? It, I think it's either or. You can't lose it. You got to win. Gotta, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you pick one. Is it a must-win game or a can't-lose game for the Bills? You got to pick one. I think it's a must-win. And and what is what is your reasoning there? 
I think we're just going to have even more extreme overreactions <laughs> if they don't. <laughs> so I don't want to see those. So they have to win for just for the sake of all Buff- Bills Mafia. Please just win this game. <laughs> <laughs> just a plea there. All right, Manny. Manny, we got to end on a high note. Yeah. Let me get a go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills.